Samen met Alexander Blom, tv-maker bij Family 7, reis ik door Israël. Met ons reizen mee Richard Donk, journalist van het Reformatorisch Dagblad... en Henk Visser, fotograaf. Israël is bijna dagelijks in het nieuws. Zogeheten nieuwsfeiten waar iedereen wel een mening over heeft. Ga met ons mee op zoek naar het menselijke verhaal achter de krantenkoppen. In het nieuws horen we vaak hoe Israël de mensenrechten aan de laar slapt. De realiteit ligt echter een stuk gecompliceerder. In deze aflevering spreek ik met twee mannen die aan de wereld willen laten zien wat er volgens hen echt aan de hand is. Straks bezoek ik de Messias beleidende Jood Kalef Meijers. Hij is internationaal strafjurist en vecht mensenrechten schendingen aan bij het internationale strafhof. Schendingen die de Palestijnse overheid haar eigen burgers aandoet. Maar eerst zijn we onderweg naar de Palestinian Media Watch. Een organisatie in Jeruzalem die de Palestijnse media in de gaten houdt. Aan de buitenkant van het kantoor kun je niet zien dat ze hier gevestigd zijn. Nice to meet you. I'm Sarah. Aan het hoofd van de Palestinian Media Watch staat Itamar Marcus. Can you tell me what is happening here in this room? Oké, okay, so. What we do here at Palestinian Media Watch is we, first thing we do is we follow everything that's happening in the official Palestinian media, mm -hmm. uh, and that includes all the social media, is everything today. So we watch Palestinian Authority television, we watch uh, Hamas television, we yeah. watch the F Fatah Facebook page, the, uh, the, the websites. We want to know all the messaging that the Palestinian leadership is giving to their people mm. in Arabic. Not what they're telling you in Europe, we want to know what they're telling their people in Arabic, and that's why we follow all of this. What is the difference? Very often, they can be completely different. So, for example, uh, Palestinian Authority tells Europeans that all they want is Judea Samaria, which they call the West Bank, and mm -hmm. then there'll be peace. Uh, they tell their own people, uh, and they tell their children, that the goal is uh, Jaffa and Haifa and Akko, they say all of Israel is an occupation mm -hmm. and all of that has to become part of Palestine. Two completely different messages on the most fundamental, fundamental issues. Another example is violence and terror. They tell the international community that they're against violence and terror, mm -hmm. yet their own people are honored and glorified every time they kill an Israeli. Mm -hmm. the, the Palestinian Authority rewards the terrorists uh, who are imprisoned by Israel with high salaries. Uh, and if they're in prison long enough, their salary is going to reach 12,000 shekel a month, which is about 3,000 euro a month. But and how are they, are they getting away with this? Because this is a crazy story, so to say. Well, uh, over the last few years, we've been Palestinian Media Watch. I've been mm -hmm. traveling to European parliaments and documenting this. And in fact, Dutch parliament mm -hmm. was one of the most vocally uh, angry at this process. In mm -hmm. fact, a few years ago, Dutch Parliament voted 148 to 2 mm -hmm. to cut off all funding to the Palestinian Authority if they mm -hmm. continue paying salaries. Um, it was in response to this that the Palestinian Authority tried to deceive the international community and mm -hmm. say they weren't paying salaries anymore. We proved last year that they were. Mm -hmm. And now again, there's tremendous international pressure on mm -hmm. the Palestinian Authority to stop. But it's not just the salaries. They honor the terrorists. They have television programs every week mm -hmm. honoring murderers of Israelis. We kijken mee op de computer van Itamar om te zien hoe dat gebeurt. One of the ways that the Palestinian Authority uh, tells its people that it supports terror mm -hmm. is by naming sporting events after terrorists and what you have here is a picture of one of the worst examples we've ever seen. This is a football tournament yeah. that was named the Ahmed Manasra football tournament. Ahmed Manasra was the youngest terrorist ever. 13-year-old boy mm. who a little over a year ago stabbed an Israeli 13-year-old boy in the neck and almost killed him. Yeah. 
And if you look at the children who are participating in the Achman Benasra football tournament, they're around the same age, mm -hmm. also around 13. So the message from Palestinian Authority to 13-year-olds is, if you want to be a 13-year-old hero, find an Israeli 13-year-old and stab him in the neck. Yeah. That's the message. The 13-year-old Israeli was in a coma for two weeks, and mm -hmm. he almost died. In the end, he survived. Yeah. But this is how they promote terror. And then they come to the world and say, oh, no, we're, we're fighting terror, and we're not, we're not in favor of terror. Also, last year, there was an active terror wave going on, and many teenagers were involved in terror. Mm. The Palestinian Authority named a basketball tournament for girls after Dalal Mugrubi, mm -hmm. female terrorist who hijacked a bus uh, and in which 37 Israeli civilians were killed. So here you have all the girls in a Dalal Mugrubi. So while terror is going on, uh -huh. and teenagers are involved in terror, for teenage girls, they have a tournament honoring a terrorist who killed civilians. And of course, we continue to have teenage terrorists since then, uh, because that's the message to the, from the Palestinian Authority to its teenagers, even girls. Do you, do you think that teenagers realize uh, this, that they know that, okay, this is some person that uh, killed... Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, they talk about it. So these happy girls you just see walking on the street and they like murderers? They are taught to admire murderers. There are three schools named after the same Dalal Mugabir. These are 12 of the children who were killed by Dalal Mugrabi mm -hmm. on the bus hijacking. This is the picture of the bus. Yeah. And there are three schools named after her. Mm. 27 people in all who were killed on this. Palestinian Authority Television went to one of the Dalal Mugrabi schools mm. and interviewed the girls and what it's like to be in a school named after Dalal Mugrabi and listen to what they said. نحن متواجدين حاليا بمدرسة دلال المغربي لحتى نتعرف وإياكم على أصل حكاية هالشهيدة وهالمناضلة الفلسطينية دلال المغربي قائدة عظيمة هذه المناضلة ربما ماتت وصعدت روحها إلى السماء ولكن ما زالت أمهاتنا تنجب ألف دلال وما زالت روحها سرية فينا دلال المغربي أعطتنا الكثير وأنا شخصيا أفتخر بأنني أنتمي إلى مدرسة دلال المغربي وأمية حياتي أن أبقى أصل للدرجة التي توصلت إليها الشهيدة المناضلة دلال المغربي her life's ambition is to be like Dalmak. So that's what they're learning. And we've already documented 24 schools mm -hmm. named after terrorists. So the tens of thousands of children, just by going through schools named after terrorists, are getting a message, we're supposed to be like them, we're supposed to kill. Morning. Het probleem wat Itamar Marcus ontmaskert, probeert Kalef Meijers ook internationaal onder de aandacht te brengen. Dat doet hij onder andere in de Knesset, in het Israëlisch Hoge Rechtshof, het Internationaal Strafhof in Den Haag en het Europese Parlement. So Kalef, can you tell me um, about human rights? What do you do here in Israel? I founded an organization about 14 years ago called the Jerusalem Institute of Justice. And uh, we do special projects to advance civil rights, human rights, uh, freedom of religion in Israel mm. and the Palestinian territories. So whereas there are many Palestinian organizations that condemn Israel mm. for the way it treats Palestinians, and many Israeli organizations that condemn the Palestinian uh, authority for what it does to Israel, we take a little bit of a different perspective. We challenge the Israeli government on issues of human rights regarding Israelis. Mm -hmm. We challenge the Palestinian Authority on issues of human rights and the way that they treat the Palestinians. Right. So what kind of things do you mean? Well, um, we have an internship program, for instance, where between 30 to 50 students from around the world come every year and um, they go into the Palestinian territories and, and write reports, they interview people. So we write reports on women's rights, children's rights, uh, arbitrary arrests, torture and degrading treatment, mm -hmm. uh, un unjust uh, trial, which is, there are many executions without trial. There are a lot of problems with uh, human rights, um, but the primary abuser is the Palestinian Authority itself, and particularly Hamas mm. in Gaza. But are they also going into Gaza, for example? We can't, uh, uh, no. The, mm -hmm. the answer is no. Uh, it's very difficult to access Gaza, and it's not very safe. No. But what we have, we have um, two internet sites, one for men and one for women in Arabic, 
which explain the human rights to mm. uh, people in Gaza and invite them to tell their stories to us, to send us their stories through the internet in an anonymous way. And we guarantee anonymity. Mm -hmm. And then we contact them and we do many Skype interviews with people. Right, okay. So our reports are not just based on, we don't just quote the report of another organization that's quoting another organization that's quoting. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have a lot of uh, very strong sourced material. And then we, we, what we do is we take these reports. In, in the Palestinian Authority, there really is no proper uh, rule of law. Uh, or separation of powers. There's no. Either, there are courts and judges in the Palestinian Authority, but in the West Bank, they're appointed by Fatah, which is a militant organization, and in Gaza, they're appointed by Hamas. So they'll never actually make a decision against the Palestinian leadership for mm. for abuse of human rights of Palestinians. So there is no real rule of law, which means the only way that we can actually advance Palestinian human rights is by. Uh, advocating with the international community. They also encourage children to seek martyrdom death. Mm -hmm. They tell them that it's good to die for Allah. It's good. And I want to show you an example. This was on just already in, in 2017, yeah. at the beginning of the year. This is on a children's program on official Palestinian TV. <laughs> Okay, look at these words. Uh, our blood is food for the revolution. This is a young boy being told that his blood, also earlier, for you, Yasser Arafat, we will die. Why are children of this age being taught on official PA television on a children's program? that death is something that's expected. Yeah. I'll yeah. just tell you something very interesting. There are, uh, in the United States, there are three different Muslims who I've been working with, uh, who've spoken at conferences where I've spoken. One is from Jordan originally, one mm -hmm. is from Egypt, and one is from, a woman is from Pakistan. Uh, all of them, all of them are horrified by this material, but what do they all say? They all say, that was me. When I was a child. Really? They say that? Yes. When I was a child in Pakistan, when I was a boy in, in, in Jordan, when I was a boy in Egypt, that was me. And they said, and I now want to fight against this mm. and against what the Palestinians are doing because it's child abuse. They consider that they were abused as children. They say, I was abused and I want to fight and, and give these children a future without hatred. During the terror last year, many of the terrorists, the majority of the terrorists were actually killed in the act, because most of them were using knives. Uh, and even those using guns, many were killed. The Palestinian Authority, Fatah, wanted to encourage them not to fear death. So they produced this video, which they put on their official Facebook page, mm -hmm. uh, targeting young people to tell them, don't worry about death attacking an Israeli, because this is actually even better than life. This is what Allah wants of you. He wants you to die for him, attacking an Israeli. And this is a promotional video, for that reason, okay. where all the actors, all the heroes, end up dying. Kill and be killed. That's the message of the Palestinian to the people. Kill, if you succeed in killing, that's wonderful. And if you're killed, it's just as wonderful because the, the, the martyr is Allah's beloved. 
So if you die for him by killing an Israeli, you're his beloved. That's the message of the Palestinian Authority and Fatah, the so-called moderates, to their people. Do you look at Palestinians as uh, the children as potential terrorists? I look at Palestinian children as victims. Hmm. When they're five, six, seven, and ten, and they're learning this, they're victims. They're, they've been poisoned. Uh, I had a press conference a few years ago with Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. when she was a senator. And uh, at the press conference with me, she said, the Palestinians are profoundly poisoning the minds of their children. Yeah. Well, if they're poisoned, they're victims. Now, the tragedy is that those poisoned children are going to grow up into being terrorists and mm -hmm. they'll end up being killed, our children will end up being killed, other civilians. So that's the great tragedy here. Mm -hmm. um, I have no anger at the Palestinian children, but I have mm -hmm. endless anger at the Palestinian leadership, at Mahmoud Abbas and the entire infrastructure of hatred uh, and the leadership of hate that he's created. Desondanks wordt in de internationale media de Palestijnse leider Mahmoud Abbas juist vaak als gematigd geportretteerd. Hoe komt het dan dat de media Israël regelmatig neerzet als agressor en schender van mensenrechten? I I think that the an element of it is uh anti-semitism. Anti-semitism exists. Mm -hmm. Anti-semitism is 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 very real. And in and it's the only explanation I have for ridiculous situations mm -hmm. where Israel the Israeli army for instance, I believe, goes beyond any other army ever in the history of mankind of trying to protect human life mm. of the enemy within a military engagement. So the last time we went into Gaza, we, our, the IDF mm. actually made over 150,000 phone calls to Palestinians saying, please leave your area mm. because w there, there's Hamas active there and we're going to have to bomb this area. They dropped millions of pamphlets from the air yeah. warning people in certain areas, etc. On the other hand, Hamas is, is, is creating uh, uh, war crimes because it, it enforces curfews, which means when these people are warned, it keeps the people in their buildings at gunpoint, Palestinians, mm -hmm. purposely putting them in the line of fire, hoping that if Israel does fire, Palestinians will be killed, pictures can be taken of the carnage, that'll make Israel look like a, a, you know, somebody who's abusing and breaching mm -hmm. international law when it's not really accurate. And these are all facts on the ground. Israel allowed thousands of journalists to enter Gaza that, wit that, that witnessed this in first person during the last military engagement. And it's very frustrating that it's not um, covered more mm -hmm. broadly in the international media, which means there's bias. Isn't it too easy to say, oh, well, this is anti-Semitism again? I think it's difficult to say that it's anti-Semitism because it sounds like such a simple answer. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes the truth is simple and I think that we need to, to call the child by its name. Mm -hmm. When you apply a different standard to two very similar situations, so you look at the Palestinian Authority and say, <clears throat> oh, we don't really expect you to, to uphold human rights. Mm -hmm. And then you apply a standard to Israel which is far above the human rights standard of any country in the world, that's a very obvious bias. It can come from two things. It can come from either anti-Semitism, mm. which is bias against Jew Jews for being Jews, or it can also come from racism against Arabs. Because if I say, because you're an Arab, I don't actually expect you to honor women, I don't expect you to have fair trials, I don't expect you to treat each other with decency, that's making a statement mm -hmm. regarding Arabs. So basically I think the, the focus point should be on uh, the violation of the human rights in Gaza, right? Yeah, I, Gaza has the most severe violation of human rights. Um, at the end of January, I traveled to The Hague and I submitted a lawsuit, uh, actually communication to the prosecutor's office at the International Criminal Court in The Hague, mm -hmm. demanding that they um, investigate Ismail Haniya, head of Hamas in Gaza, for war crimes against Palestinians. His militants used uh, people as human shields. When they would cross the street, they'd surround themselves with 12 children. So that if, if, God forbid, Israel fired on them, children would be injured. That's a war crime. They kept, uh, they stored weapons, uh, major weapons, missiles, in civilian infrastructure, including hospitals, clinics, kindergartens, putting civilians in the line of fire. Their own people cannot speak out. And this is, in, in all the situations that become before the court, it's, it's, it's the same thing. You have to have independent NGOs mm. that actually submit communications, bring forth evidence, 
and 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 then uh, cause the court to act. It's it's never the people themselves. People from Gaza cannot ask the International Criminal Court to prosecute Ismail Haniya because they would be executed. Mm. And I'm simply representing the voices within the Palestinian Authority that cannot speak up for themselves. Mm -hmm. But they speak to you. Yes. In this room, everything, everything happens. We start from the raw material and we take it all the way to the subtitled mm -hmm. videos and actually produce the reports. So if we look over there in the corner yeah. at uh, Meira, Meira was born in Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, her name was Maisa there. Now she has a Hebrew name. Uh, and she's watching Palestinian television okay. uh, and translating for us at first into Hebrew, yeah. uh, looking for the important material that might be there. Yeah. Um, simultaneous to what um, Ira is doing in English, uh, on television we have on the on the desk right next to you mm -hmm. is another translator, and he's uh, reviewing official Palestinian Authority newspaper, mm -hmm. uh, going through literally every article. You never every know article. where every article, because for example, even in sports pages, as you've seen, there are sporting events named at the terrace, so that yeah. we even have to read the sports pages of the newspaper because you never know where you're going to find uh, mm -hmm. important material. You could read a whole sports article and then at the end they said this tournament was named after and it's a terrorist who killed 20 people. Een van de medewerkers laat ons een deel van een uitzending zien die ze op dat moment aan het vertalen is. was trained for six months in a, in a military training camp. And he turned her into a perfect uh, example. Mm -hmm. And she was able to be even the leader of 10 or 11 men. They went across the sea in, in rubber boats mm -hmm. from Lebanon. And then she went uh, in the hijacked bus, she went uh, 82 kilometers from Haifa to Tel Aviv. And she was able to kill 37. Uh, okay. It says, he said, and she was able to kill 37 Israeli soldiers, but of course we know that mm. they weren't soldiers. What kind of tele television program was this? Was it like a documentary or...? A this was a, this was a uh, talk show uh -huh. uh, that was on TV in honor of the anniversary of Abu Jihad, the anniversary of his being killed by Israel. Mm -hmm. It's been recently, or yes, yes. Yeah, yes. okay. Yeah. okay Just right. this month. We're in the process right now of subtitling. Mm -hmm. Uh, both are dealing with uh, hate messages to children on official Palestinian television. And here's the first one. By the way, the program that we're watching is called The Best Home. It's the most important children's program on Palestinian TV. Okay. <laughs> What you saw here are a number of the hate messages all combined into one. Mm -hmm. um, one is a libel that Israel poisoned Yasser Arafat. Of course, it's been proven to be false, yeah. but it generates hatred. Uh, the goal is the liberation of all of Palestine, means all of Israel, uh, and we're willing to be martyrs, millions of martyrs marching to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So here in one little brief video, we see how the children are constantly getting all, it's worthy to hate Israel, they murder Arafat, we're gonna liberate all of Israel, uh, and- You have a reason and to hate. You have a reason to hate, yeah. and you should even die for it. Yeah. So, um, just a question, have you ever been uh, threatened because of the work that you do here? Or has there been a threat here? We haven't been directly threatened, but the Palestinian Authority uh, attacks verbally. Verbally mm. attacks Palestinian Media Watch regularly. Uh, last year, they actually broadcast uh, a 10-minute interview. They rebroadcast a 10-minute interview that I had done on Israeli television. They translated it to Arabic and they twisted some of the words to make it sound that we were saying that we wanted to harm Palestinian children. Mm. Um, and this was happening while terror was going on all around us. 
Uh, three Israelis were, had recently been mm -hmm. killed just a block away. So we took the name off the door. Yeah. Uh, we put in cameras. Uh, we're going to be extra cautious, even mm -hmm. though we haven't had any specific threats. Right. And some of the people here, you ask me uh, not to film them. Can you explain me why that is? Uh, many of our translators uh, originally are from military intelligence, mm -hmm. and many of them still do reserve duty in military intelligence, and for that reason they prefer not to be filmed. Right. To be honest, if I think about your job, it's not really the most cheering job that you can have. How, how do you get happy from your work? Uh, I get happy because it's impacting. Uh -huh. I get happy because I see change. As bad as things are today, it would be so much worse mm -hmm. without the things that Palestinian Media Watch has exposed. Um, without Palestinian Media Watch, the world wouldn't even know that the Palestinians are paying salaries to mm -hmm. these terrorists. They wouldn't know about all the sporting events named at the terrorists. They, mm -hmm. the, the world would be believing that Israel is the problem. Yeah. And what we're doing is we're going country by country and convincing the people and convincing the legislators and the governments when we can mm -hmm. that the problem is the Palestinian Authority. Uh, ideally, it would be changed by the people themselves who would get sick of their leadership for just poisoning them with, with hatred. Mm -hmm. Um, and they are sick of the leadership, by the way. Recent polls for the last f many months have shown that 80% of Palestinians think that the government is corrupt and 65% want Mahmoud Abbas to resign. And mm -hmm. if you're thinking of putting pressure any direction, pressure has to be put on the Palestinian Authority um, because it's only by putting pressure on them that they possibly will ever change mm -hmm. and change from a hate-filled, terror-promoting uh, authority to possibly something peaceful. Like on a personal level, it, it, it's, not, it's not nice, I think, you know, to be the guy who is only always on the other side of what the rest of the world thinks. How is this for you? Yeah, I, I feel like um, when I look at the story of David and Goliath, uh -huh. I think that uh, actually uh, all of the, if I was betting back then, I would have bet on David and not Goliath. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because David had the blessing of, of God and he was representing Israel. And when I look around today to the Israeli nation, I see blessing. I think Israel is miraculously blessed. And I, and I, I believe that's, that's in, my, in my heart of hearts, I believe it, it's God's hand that's mm -hmm. blessing Israel, that has gathered back the Jewish people from around the world, that's given us the, the strongest economy in the world. Like, literally, literally today, there are more companies traded on NASDAQ than the entire European continent. And, and, and our environment's being blessed. It's, it's really, really miraculous. How is it that Israel has the highest agricultural output per capita than any country in the world? We have the highest dairy output per capita than any country in the you world. tell me. It's, I believe it's because of the blessing of God. So I think I'm on the winning side. So yeah. I, don't, I don't feel like uh, it might be David and Goliath, but who won in the end, right? That's David. right. <laughs> so, so I'm glad I'm... Uh, uh -huh. and, uh, and I... So... so um, like David called, told Goliath, if God is with us, who can be against us? Uh -huh. and, and that, I think, gives me the faith to continue speaking up for, for truth and taking on these seemingly insurmountable uh, projects. Wat deze twee mannen met hun werk onthullen, is dat de mensen in Gaza net zo goed slachtoffer zijn. De schuldigen zijn niet de Palestijnse burgers, maar het zijn hun leiders die kinderen aanzetten om Joden te haten en die de mensenrechten van hun bevolking schenden. Een onthutsende ontdekking waar over het algemeen weinig aandacht voor is.